I'm excited and thank you, Natasha. I'm excited to be here and excited to chat with you today. So good afternoon, Malcolm Reed, the Malcolm Reed. It's been long and waiting to get you on this corner. We want for you to take us back a little bit into this journey. So tell us what you're up to now and how did you get there? Uh, at this time, I'm a global um, risk management consultant um, dealing with security and operational risk. So I advise uh, clients all over the world currently. Um, how did I get into it? It kind of found me. So I started uh, way, way back after studying. I studied engineering first. I wanted to be an engineer. And um, after applying for many engineering roles, I got the opportunity. Someone saw me and says, you know what? I applied for an, an engineering manager role. And they're like, you know, I think you would make a great security manager. Just you know, the way that you present yourself and um, the way that you speak your logical thinking. He said, I'll apply as well. And that person uh, just believed in me, the name of Cedric, which is me. And he believed in me and he um, gave me the opportunity to become a security manager. Of course, during that time, you could fail as a security manager and your career would go down the drain. But I was able to um, keep studying and, and keep abreast of what the latest is in the profession and move all the way now to where I advise people who are the head of security at global organizations. So now I sit on the global board of the biggest security organization in the entire world. And I get a chance to interact with chief security officers for companies that have hundreds of thousands of people. So I've worked with the, like, the IFC World Bank Group, the IDB globally. Um, um, we have clients all over, all over universities, MIT, we have, you know, you name it. People come to come to me for advice. So it's, it's living the dream that I've always wanted. You know, um, to make a difference in the world. I think that's what I'm doing. More so, you know, obviously I have a, my craft is into the risk and security and cyber and all of that. But more than that, making a difference. I think that is the key. And that's what I was wanting to do and that's what I'm doing. All right. So for, for my sake and for some of the, the persons viewing, tell us a little bit about what security management, global security management, what does that entail? So that, that, uh, that affects everyone, especially if you work in the corporate sector. Um, all companies have to pay attention to that. So as, as you know, um, we're in the midst of a pandemic, some countries, some, some countries even more than others in the midst of the pandemic. Um, returning to business, continuing a business, even in the face of the pandemic, is part of that what security or business continuity, as I call it. I'm, I mean, I'm a business continuity professional as well how you prepare um, companies to, to uh, continue their business in the event of disruptive events or disasters. And from a security perspective, we see where cyber threats are all over the world. Um, with the cyber, cyber aspect of security, it's affecting companies. Companies who think they have not been hacked just don't know it yet, right? That's what it is, what it is. And uh, physical security, the threat of terrorism in today's world and uh, sabotage and so many other things that we've seen in companies in almost every country. Every country has this. Every organization has to have a security plan in place. Um, it protects your physical assets. I spoke about cyber, your informational assets. Your reputation of your company also is protected as well. So without security, your company can actually um, pretty much cease to exist because your, your reputation goes down the drain as well as your physical assets could be taken. Your trade secrets can, can move out of your company. And um, so physical security is a key security management and the management of that entire process, the security management. How do you manage that and link that into the business? Um, it doesn't operate on its own. So saying that we're spending millions of dollars protecting our organization is not good enough. Mm. The CEO one doesn't want to hear that. The CEO wants to know that you are thinking business-minded. We are in the business of making widgets. And to make these widgets, we have to secure our widget plant and our supply chain for those widgets to go into our distribution channels. So whatever you do, security is part of what you do and it provides that um, revenue assurance for your organization. <laughs> I got a security management 101 for dummies. <laughs> All right. So 
you know you talked about the difference that you you you're making globally internationally i want you to share a little bit you know more in depth about that impact uh, the impact is from a professional perspective and the impact is also from a community perspective from a professional perspective i'm a professional volunteer in my profession as well helping i uh, help develop standards worldwide the same standards that all organizations use across the world so i've been a uh, um in the technical committee for standards developing global standards in the security industry um i've also um there is a encyclopedia of security and emergency management i have the official entry for business continuity so contributing again has been downloaded many 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 times um for people mm-hmm. looking for information of how to develop um, what business continuity is and how it affects their company um, so that's a professional standpoint i sit on the global board of um as i said it's the largest security organization and i sit on the us national board for the uh business continuity institute as well so that's a related but separate field and i'm also a chapter chair for the association of certified fraud examiners so making a contribution is it's, it's a lot of volunteering but if you think that's what that was a lot i'm also i've also sat on five 501c3 boards which is um the equivalent of a non-profit board so those are we did into young people um young and underprivileged youth um US army veterans and uh, more so on the IT advisory uh, council for Virginia State University so making a contribution to tomorrow's leaders as well um in addition to that uh always mentoring others as well i have mentees active mentees a formal mentoring process where i have set mentees and i help them develop to the fullest potential including uh college age individuals as well um i've been blessed with two uh two really um, gifted kids and i want to make sure everyone has that in you know, that same ability and same if i can help guide them on, and tap into their inner self and they can achieve everything that they want to achieve i would be happy as well so your outlook what significant changes have you observed over the past 2 to 3 years and what's your outlook for the next 12 months well we've seen uh, lots of changes in the world over the past 3 years um and because i'm into risk you know i see the world through a risk based lens um i see that uh, natural disasters are happening um much more frequently and the impact of those natural disasters are also much stronger when a disaster hits it affects more people disaster don't just affect people they affect different people differently hmm. so impact, um think about if a disaster hit and a single parent household was hit you know so it affects women differently from men it affects different uh, demographics differently people who are underprivileged have a harder time accessing resources as well so we have um that happening in the world and a shift in focus a shift in migration patterns all over the world um as you know in Trinidad I've seen a, uh, from South America to from South America mean and to Trinidad and Tobago an increase in migration patterns mm-hmm. so and of course the pandemic which we've seen that, that has changed the world you know um not just from work from home but how people think how people interact some people have not shaken someone's hand you know i mean it's just think think of the things that you used to do before you don't do them anymore um flying for example uh, you know airline uh you know travel is is it's has diminished greatly um and people are just trying to get back into that but again there are parts of the world where the pandemic has really done um tremendous damage to their communities so that So if one country is doing well it's still we live in a global community so it's going to affect us again for the next 12 months again about that critical infrastructure and cyber um you know and sat with the linked in cyber and um, critical infrastructure that's happening today that's happening now and the next 12 mm-hmm. months we will see that ramping up where we have nation state actors and other groups um targeting government targeting private sector large companies to try to bring them to their knees um mm-hmm. that's something that you need to see happening in the next 12 months and also the pandemic in 2019 i spoke to a group called isaka in trinidad um on business continuity and i told them 
and I, I made a correct prediction. I said, we will see a pandemic in the next two years. And they were like, how did you even know this? That's because I see the writing on the wall. I don't have any special powers then, you know, but I can see certain things happening mm -hmm. for a period of time. And I see that I've seen where we have um, uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria is something that's, that's happening. Um, and it's just pockets of things happening all over the world that you realize that once those things have read their head, they're going to continue and get worse as we move forward. So we're going to see other pathogens and other, um, you know, something really just like the pandemic, you know, um, something very much similar to that may not be the same thing, may not be maybe worse. Um, so we, we're living in a new world. The world is not the same since 2020. The world is not the same. So we expect the 12, next 12 months to be people trying to get back into work, but still having to deal with different types of risks and risks that are compounded. Like, for example, what happens when you are sheltering in place or as Trinidad is doing now um, on the total lockdown for the pandemic and a disaster strikes and it be a hurricane. Um, it doesn't, you know, hurricanes and stuff don't say, you know what, you're already experiencing this. I'm going to go somewhere else. You know, um, although Trinidad is slightly below the hurricane belt, um, global warming, and global um, changes in, in climate patterns are changing. So we, you can't really be sure. So hmm. I know I said I'm awful there, but that's um, that's my outlook for the next one. We have to live in a world where we understand risk and we have to be able to thrive in that risk. So that's that's an important thing, being able to, to how do you thrive in an environment such as that. So your hurdles. Hmm. What are your most challenging experiences? Living here in the, in the U.S., it does um, present challenges for someone that, like myself. Uh, it's, it's, it's no secret to everyone knows that um, not everyone believes you know, what people are equal and people should be treated equally. So you do get the occasional person who may judge you. Um, you know, they have prejudice, so they prejudge you, you know, based on their own Maybe something they looked at on television or some movie or whatever. I don't know. You know, they hear the way that you speak, they see the way that you look, they assume something about you. Usually negative. And um, it's, it's sort of up to you. <laughs> it shouldn't be, but it's up to you to prove them otherwise. You know, so I don't try to prove them otherwise, to be honest with you. I, um, so the challenge here is not trying to um, get verification for, or validation from anyone. I don't need a validation from God. So, and God has blessed me with whatever talents that I do have. So I, you know, people who interact with me know that, okay, wow, I didn't realize you were, what, you know? When I, I've, I've been to business meetings, I've spoken to a large business group um, here. And uh, when I got there, people thought I was a waiter, you know? But the challenge of having your voice heard by the people that need to hear it without them judging you. But people always make assumptions about you, not knowing your own journey, not knowing where you came from, not knowing, yes, you came from very little, but you were able to build something greater. And that's why I've always had a strong focus, a laser focus on achieving excellence. I, for my own family, my own kids as well, we all focus on excellence. So I think a focus on excellence is what you use to go beyond and to, you know, um, to overcome these challenges. So, you ready to give us some advice? Friendly advice. Yes. Let's hear from the desk of Malcolm Reed. So, a person's getting into business or leadership. Uh, I would say getting into business is not for the faint-hearted. You know, it's, um, it's something you have to make up your mind. I want to get into business. Mm -hmm. And once you get that out of the way, so you have a you set a goal, you have a vision for your company. What do you want to do? Um, I would say don't try to be all things to all people. That's uh, that's something I would say. Find something that you're really good at. Everyone's blessed with some talent that maybe no one else in the world is as good as you. Can, you know. And so whatever your craft is, um, narrow it, narrow that focus into whatever you're good at, and then push that out there. Also. Hold on for the ride. If you've ever, ever seen a rodeo, um, when you're trying to ride that horse or bull or whatever they, they ride, it wants to throw you off. 
that's what the right that's what the journey as a business um, owner as an entrepreneur in some cases um, would have to go through so nights i think gladys nights um, overnight success you know it's not business is not an overnight success especially if you want lasting returns and just a bit on leadership always be willing to listen to others you know mm-hmm. a leader is not a leader if, if that leader doesn't listen to other people doesn't have empathy having empathy understanding others point of view some people when you speak to them they say oh yeah yeah okay right 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 yeah um mm-hmm. but could you they haven't heard you they haven't mm-hmm. listened to you a good leader listens to someone when you ask someone how are you it's a real question it's not how are you is not just a greeting how are you doing but they're not waiting for an answer they want to continue you wait for the answer you know how is your how are your kids how is your family you know how are things going with you you want to know you want to genuinely know and that's key in leadership because leadership is about motivating people to be their best a leader is not the smartest person in the room a leader is not the hardest working person in the room a leader is really someone who can take a group of people it could be two people or two million people or more and motivate them to be their best so that's my friend advice so malcolm I know you have your bottle of water and all of that, <laughs> so you could just clear your throat and just jump right in into the theme song for this feature. Tell us a few of your favorite things. Hmm. Like these are a few of my favorite things. So let me see. Um, I do like to, uh, to visit different places. Some places yes. are fast-paced, good for business. Some places are very slow-paced, good for relaxation. We just get to interact with people. But um, I can't say I have a favorite uh, at this point in time. You know, um, people. I love interacting with people, even people that don't agree with me. Uh, listen to them and learn something because when I listen to others. Um, I always say God gave you two ears, one mouth. <laughs> so you listen more, and you learn from other people. So finding people who don't agree with me, I try to make an extra effort to find these people, and um, they're my favorite people because they force me to dig deep and, and think critically, and also to learn more about myself as well as any other topic that I'm interested in. Um, Um, in terms of song, <laughs> for me, I'm not sure. I, you know, I listen to the classical music more to to relax. But in terms of um, in terms of song, I appreciate different genres of music as well. That song, the Gambler, comes to mind. You know, know when to hold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. It's a good life lesson. So interesting song um, to me. But I like you know. Old school '90s as well. The um, that type of music, Tina Turner, music from Tina Turner. We don't need another hero. Uh, those kind of you know songs, songs are popping into my mind, and those are some some good ones. Um, but I, I don't have a favorite as in one, you know. Favorite food once again. I appreciate food from all over the world, but I must say, um, can be a good trendy roti. <laughs> I mean, the good thing you would eat. And doubles as well. Doubles, rookie doubles. Um, Kalaloo. We've had Kalaloo. And that would be my favorite, um, favorite food. Um, books, I read a lot of, um, you know, I've just seen from my profile, I've studied a lot. I've read a lot of management books by like Peter Drucker, um, Michael Porter, and all of them. I also read books on, by um, motivational, motivational books as well. Um, Laws of success, and that type of thing. Forty-eight rules. Those are also um, good, good books just for um, leisure reading as well. As a man think it. Also, good books. I love languages as well. You know, listening to other people, understanding how did we, as human beings, understood, form so many languages. 
so many complex communication tools. And I'm fascinated by that. You know, so I do have many favorite things, but in different areas. So someone like me would be a very, it'd be hard for me to be a judge in Miss Universe then. Because I would see, I can see beauty in different types of people. So it'd be hard to say, that's the most beautiful person in the world. Because beauty is something that um, different cultures represent different things. All right, let's go to the other one. So Malcolm, this this particular area here, we're not laughing with you, we'll be laughing at you. So okay. tell us yeah. your clumsiest moment. As presenting at a, a doctoral consortium. Drop the microphone, pick up the microphone and drop the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you start feeling like, what else, you know? What else you gonna drop? And everyone's looking at you like, and they're all serious too because a doctoral, they're like, that didn't help as well. Everybody's face was like, I felt like my shirt just got big. I felt like I was falling into my shirt. I was getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. You know, so I wasn't, uh, back on, I was trying to suppress that, you know, but <laughs> it happens to the best of us, you know, and um, learn from it and you move on. But when those things happen at that time, you get, um, you get tunnel vision. Also, blinkers on, not seeing only directly in front of you. Oh, shit. Everybody's laughing, at least they're laughing. But when they're looking at you, like, <laughs> iPad dropped to my phone. You need to get it back, enter back the code, and you're speaking. You know, I'm speaking, you know, so it makes it. Um, I learned a lot from it, though, in terms of how I present now. I use a lapel mic instead now. Because I, I told them I wanted a mic. I said, no, I don't want a lapel mic. I want a microphone. <laughs> and I drop the mic. So, I drop the iPad. So, it's, it's, um, it's one of those things. I'm just picturing you just going into that shit. That, yes, I like that. Spell, the spelling tape. <laughs> I just, and I show all people saw, they only look up on the, the uh, stage, they show a shirt, a pair of trousers, <laughs> and some shoes. And like when Malcolm wrote, it didn't melt. No, it didn't melt. It became so small that <laughs> he's trying to crawl out of the shirt, you know? So you can see that visual in your mind, you know? We just, like Ant-Man. Yes! <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to flip that smile. Flip that smile for a little while. Right. Oh. Okay, please. Um, for me, manners, people who... Um, like I get a lot of emails that just say, Malcolm, to someone who probably never met me before or we've never really communicated before. Like, Malcolm, I need this. Good morning. <laughs> 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 or you, they call you on the phone. Hey, hey, I need, I say, whoa, good morning, how are you? I think it's, it's people undervalue that. Manners are, they're free, but they go a long way. Wow. And a lot of people don't have manners in today's world. They think manners take up time and they make things less efficient. Not for me. That's my pet peeve. I that would bother me through the first at least ten minutes of the conversation that the person didn't have any manners. I grew up I grew up where I grew up, my parents would say, if you said good morning, they say even just if you said just good morning, good morning who? You know? <laughs> or if you just if you woke up and you like you're like Nothing. So, for me, I grew up in you know, manners. Thank you. Please. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. After, you know, my, I think that's one of my major pet peeves. Manners and people who also have, I mean, <laughs> sorry to bring this one up, but um, people have poor hygiene as well. I think that's terrible. You know, people who, they jump on the, <laughs> they jump on the, the subway, you know, you jump on the subway, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is going on? You know, I mean, you don't have to, you know, that's that's offensive, you know. Especially someone like me, I could I could go to a food court and smell every single food item. I'm very sensitive. So when someone and then in the subway, you put your hands up, you know, you put your arm up and hold on. The I'm like, I'm looking to just jump off at the next stop quickly. Don't have um, proper hygiene, and the pandemic has brought out a lot of that. And lots of people who are like, I haven't taken a shower in four days. I'm like, oh. <laughs> like I've been, I've, I've been like maybe eight. Eight nine times in four days. I said, like, "Oh, they tell me you bathe too much; it's gonna damage your skin." 
Okay. Oh, God. Every day, every day, <laughs> minimum twice a day. That's in winter. In the summertime, be more, you know. And then, you, you know, it doesn't damage my skin, you know. You, you take care of yourself. But I think people have this perception that um, oh, you a week. I've heard once a week. I've heard people in developed countries say once every two weeks. It's like, that is horrible, you know. So, again, no manners and no hygiene. That would do it for me. Yeah, be like, oh, problems, no problems. Yeah, so those are my two. I think those are my two major oh, ones. Very, yeah. very simple and easy to solve for most people. I think uh, water is not that expensive in most places, you know, and uh, oh, manners are free. So, huh. yeah. huh. Let me catch my breath. If you can govern yourself personally, then you can be trusted with other things. That's what I see it as. Don't tell me you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, but you don't take showers. You don't brush your teeth. <laughs> All your teeth are rocking in your mouth. No, you have to take your personal governance, then you can govern other things. Yeah. Oh Lord, all my mascara is going. Oh yes, Malcolm. I didn't know you had that side. Yes, so yes. <laughs> okay, so the next one. Your hobbies. Ah, uh, hobbies. For me, I like I like nature. So I like going out into nature and just um listening to the birds um out there in nature, going down to river to the seaside just looking at nature and it's that's god's creation just looking at that and admiring the things we take for granted you know um mm. i think that's my hobby just doing that i also like um, i'm an enthusiast uh, drone enthusiast as well so i have a lot of technology but i like to fly my drone and you know it, within the airspace and within the parameters of of um you know where i'm, I'm allowed to fly it you know so I, I do that. So that's something I like to do. And I have to, to work out, exercise. I think part of that um, self-government um, is taking care of yourself. You know, you only have one body. There's no, I can't go somewhere and buy spare parts. Uh, so taking care of yourself as much as you can, you know, exercising is very important. Um, especially now that we, we've been in the pandemic has forced us to be indoors a lot. So just general fitness and keep yourself physically active. Um, reading is also a hobby. I like to read, um, the knowledge and traveling, as I mentioned before. All right. So Malcolm, we are just to the end of our time together in corporate corner. And uh, the very, very last question I'm going to ask you to make a wish. I want to live in a world where we are all you know, not to take that, uh, um, take that phrase from, from the Captain America TV show, but you know, all <laughs> one world, one people, you know. <laughs> but um, I wish that we can all come together and people can see, go back to being human beings. We've lost, we've lost that humanity. You know, we've lost our human touch. We've lost fast food, fast cars, mm. fast everything has taken that human connection away from us. And I would love to be, you know, it's like how you and I could sit, well, it'd be easier to sit in person, but just take time to connect with someone, take time to listen, take time to be a human being and to practice kindness. So if my wish is to see everybody just, um, you know, look within themselves and be the best person that they can be, be a kind person, be a, a global citizen, be caring and to not judge others. So, Absolutely. So, on behalf of the key business community, Malcolm, we want to say a resounding heartfelt thank you. Thanks for spending any time with us today. And as we always say, it, see you around the corner. Yes, thank you very much. Take care. <laughs>